Hey there everybody what is going on my name is Aditya and welcome back to another brand new video regarding the semantic UI's theming process and this is part number six of this uh, programming series. So in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how we can go ahead and customize the font that, has, that is present in our site. So without any further ado let's just jump right into this thing. So basically when you think about the code for your fonts, it's all available right in front of you over here under the font section. Now obviously uh, semantic UI is able to do a couple of things over here. Let's just go through all of these variables one by one. Now the first variable is at font name which is set to Lato which is basically the default font that uh, oops, uh, you, that you can see right over here this is the Lato font. And okay, let's just go ahead and open up index.html and I'm going to be creating a h1 tag that has got, um, let's just say semantic UI theming course and that's it. So this font is basically Lato font. Uh, now I don't have what font over here or else I could have shown you uh, what font is a plugin for Chrome that detects what font is used on the particular web page. Uh, it's a really convenient tool in case you want to know what uh, what kind of font the uh, site is using. Uh, I have found it really useful. Anyways, so add font name it's set to Lato and uh, Basically, then there's add font smoothing, which is set to anti-aliased. Now, the font that you can see that is present right in front of you, the, at the in the video that you are watching, this font is anti-aliased. Now, the reason why I can say that is it is because set in my settings that you know it should be anti-aliased font. So the font options you can see gray anti-aliased and sub-pixel anti-aliased, and this is just exactly that. If I remove anti-aliasing, the font won't be looking that much smoother. It will be looking kind of rough. But anyways, that does it. Then there's header font, which is basically, you know, the H1, H2 tags, and then there's P and those tags. So basically, you can go ahead and uh, set up your fonts right over here. Now, some of the times, you don't want the page font to be exactly same as your header font. Sometimes you want a serif font as your header font. In, the, in that case, I recommend you changing this entire line. Even though we are going to be taking a look at it, I'm not going to be changing it, by the way. I'm just going to be showing you font name. But a header font and page font, these are two code properties. You can simply just go ahead, copy them and paste them over there. Or else you can go ahead and, you know, kind of create a new variable for these things. Uh, I don't recommend that but uh, still just go ahead copy the page font in case you want the uh, serif look to the font on the page um, that is the thing then there's the Google font name which is set to font name in case the font is not present on in the user's computer now uh, import Google fonts is by default set to true and it gets the font sizes of 400 700 400 italic and 700 italic now if I go over here and let's just go ahead and search for uh, Montserrat now this font right over here it does not have um, but let me just go ahead and see it right over here so as you can see it right over here um, this these 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 are the couple of options uh, you know the 400 ones the 700 ones might just be the semi bold ones so that basically means you know you are going ahead and grabbing the code for a particular type of um, thickness of the font I can say so uh, apparently you only go under there you can go ahead and check out its uh, uh, you know combination with the different types of fonts that are present on the web on Google fonts especially and you can see it it really gives you a couple of intriguing intriguing options so you can go ahead and check that out so for today's video I guess I'm gonna be using this font called as poppins so well without you know, that let's just go ahead and see what else is there now there's a Google subset which is set to Latin and this subset will be used somewhere over here now there will be a font request the protocol will be HTTPS colon backslash backslash now some of the times the thing is that 
you don't want to grab the fonts from the Google and instead those fonts are provided to you from something like um, let me just see if that um, no it's not Apple it's Adobe I guess uh, type kit um, so from Adobe type kit some of the fonts come yes exactly this is this is the one type kit.com and basically from type kit you want some fonts and maybe there's some other website the, some other font serving website from where you want to grab the font so you can go ahead and kind of do it in similar fashion right over uh, here in the semantic UI's code here uh, you can go ahead and change this couple of things and you will be ready to go I guess so you can go ahead and grab the fonts from even over here and these fonts are I guess you know paid so I, I don't really use them because there are way better fonts right now present on the Google fonts so you know paying a couple of bucks a year is not that you know uh, it's not that good I guess so anyways let's just go ahead and change our font right now so I want to go ahead and set poppins as my font now what I want is over here I'm gonna be setting it to poppins and I'm gonna be saving the code but no um, I guess I fucked up okay so I have to go ahead and copy it down over here now I recommend using going ahead and uh, setting up a couple of uh, comments over here so let's just say it is a uh, you know colors really with not primary color so then there's a uh, font and let's just go ahead and set the font to oopsie poppins and I'm gonna be saving the code so now it has saved the code and all I need to go ahead and do is build the CSS now in order to build the CSS um, oops uh, as I said it's just as easy as that now it will take a couple of minutes or a couple of moments in order to go ahead and build the entire CSS files and the minified versions the non minified versions of every single one of those it will take some time but it's worth it just come back right after it is done okay so it is done right now and I'm gonna be going back over here and I'm gonna be refreshing the page and as you can see I'm here with the new font called as poppins and this is not exact same font that you saw earlier uh, I hope it works oh no it uh, it just went to the semantic UI's website which I was seeing earlier for some reason uh, so you can see this is the new font that that it got uh, from uh, the Google fonts now obviously you can go ahead and play with these settings uh, let me just go ahead and show you another setting let's just say I want to change the page font to something that is more of a, a serif font so I'm gonna be saying page font will be set to uh, it will not be poppins um, well I guess I'll be removing this one part over here for some reason I, I don't know why and then there's a serif font well any serif font actually let's just let's just go with it so I'm gonna be building the CSS again all over it is such a pain oh my god I'm not gonna be editing this part out because I'm too lazy to do so so now it is packaging the uncompressed CSS and I just have to wait and uh, hold it enough and there we go so now if I go ahead and refresh the page you can see it just it's just some serif font even though the headers are coming in a really good font uh, let's just revert the, that change back because I don't want it something like that uh, even though I want the font to be poppins for the rest of this series we are going to be creating an entire beautiful website with the help of this thing a front page actually for a company which is some imaginary company so anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video if you love this video just go ahead and slap that like button i hope i was not as annoying today and peace out